TV. There we go. We're going to fade to live. All right. Good evening and welcome to our public hearing where we will be reviewing the proposed updates to the City of Columbus Fire Prevention Code, Title 25. I'm Council Member Emmanuel Remy, Chair of the Public Safety Committee. I want to remind everyone that the hearing is currently live on YouTube and Facebook and is also live and being recorded for rebroadcast on CTV. Columbus Columbus's Government Television Channel 3. The rebroadcast schedule is available at www.columbus.gov. Before we begin, I want to thank and welcome to our presenters this evening. Joining us from the Department of Public Safety Division of Fire is Assistant Chief Dave Bow, David Bow, uh, Fire Prevention Bureau. I also want to thank Captain Brian Fowler and Battalion Chief Doug Hart for joining us today. Thank you very much. The purpose of this hearing is to review the proposed updates to the City Fire Prevention Code. As currently written, the Fire Prevention Code has not received a major update since 1987. The Ohio Fire Code delegates authority to the Columbus Division of Fire to inspect occupancies within the City of Columbus and enforce the Ohio Fire Code. A provision also grants authority to develop a local code that may identify more specific guidance for fire safety measures. The City Fire Prevention Code, Title 25, serves as a local code. Feedback from the city, Columbus City Attorney's Office identified that there were issues with the current version of the code that could lead to legal enforcement issues. Subsequently, an initi initiative to rewrite the City Fire Code began. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and just turn the floor over to our presenter this evening who will provide us a review of the proposed updates. Assistant Chief Bow, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairman Remy, for the opportunity to present the proposed updates to the Columbus Fire Code, Title 25. I'm Assistant Chief David Ball of the Fire Prevention Bureau. With me, as you stated, are Battalion Chief Doug Hart and Captain Brian Fowler. The main objective of this code change proposal is to update and modernize the current city fire code. Why do we want to update this code? The Division of Fire is an accredited agency. Updating the code was listed as a goal in the 2017 evaluation cycle. When conducting inspections, the Ohio Fire Code is the minimum standard. Usually it is updated every three years. There has been a COVID excep exception that has extended this time frame. The current city fire code is obsolete in reference to the current version of the Ohio Fire Code. Here are some examples. Current code 2506 refers to Ohio Fire Code Article 6 means of egress, when in actuality means of egress is rule number 10 in the current Ohio Fire Code. Another example includes in the current city code 2510 refers to hazardous materials. Hazardous materials codes are documented in Rule 50 of the Ohio Fire Code. Current code 2519 refers to fire extinguishers, where fire extinguishers are addressed in other chapters of the current Ohio Fire Code. advancing. There we go. Continuing with why we want to update this code, the proposed city code update provides alignment with the Ohio Fire Code numbering system. This makes it easier when conducting research and administering code enforcement. Since the Ohio Fire Code is based off of the International Fire Code, then commentary is available that clarifies the intent of specific code language or provides an explanation. Adopting the proposed code will also help with updating the code in the future. Here are some examples. Chapter 56 of the International Fire Code and Ohio Fire Code is fireworks and explosives. In the proposed code, Fireworks and Explosives is listed in Chapter 2556. In Chapter 1 of the International Fire Code and Ohio Fire Code, this section includes permits in Section 105.6 and 105.7. 
the proposed city code includes permits in section 2501.05.6 and 2501.05.7. And the last example is chapter 80 of the International Fire Code and Ohio Fire Code covers reference standards. The proposed city code includes reference standards in chapter 2580. Other changes to the proposed code uh, moves permits from the old chapter 2502 into chapter 2501, consistent with the Ohio Fire Code and the International Fire Code. Other examples include moving unfriendly fires and causing fire through negligence from 2514 and 2515 into new chapter 2501 of the proposed code, which is consistent with the Ohio Fire Code and the Inter International Fire Code. The proposed code adopts discretionary permits that are listed in the International Fire Code and the Ohio Fire Code. Permits serve as a placeholder for additional inspection considerations regarding issues that may be extremely hazardous, affect public safety, or affect a person's ability to evacuate immediately. Examples of changes include the removal of the bowling pin refinishing permit, which is now obsolete, while adding a carbon dioxide CO2 systems permit, which refers to specific inspection considerations listed in section 5307 of the Ohio Fire Code. Also, some of the permits have changed names to be consistent with the Ohio Fire Code, such as combustible metals changing to magnesium and other combustible metals. Continuing with other changes, include moving the hazmat transportation language from current 2551 to 2550, which includes numbering changes. No other substantive changes to the code language exist in that move. It's merely a numbering change to be consistent with the Ohio Fire Code. Last, permit fees were removed from the body of the code language the permit fees remain the same as old permit fees. Other fees that reside in the current office documents are now published so we remain transparent to the community. Any new permits were issued a fee commensurate with other permits that are in the proposed fire code. The old fire code references high rise safety in section 2509 whereas the new code references a more detailed explanation of our current high-rise safety program in Chapter 2504. We have also adopted language similar to what is listed in the Ohio Fire Code to detail the duties, training, and number of crowd managers at public gatherings. These references are proposed in the interest of public safety at events over 1,000 people. The intent is to reduce scenarios or possibilities that may lead to stampedes or crushing injuries that have happened throughout history. In review of the fee schedule, as I previously stated, publishing the fee schedule is in the spirit of transparency. If the city decides to update fees in the future, whether raising or lowering, updating just the fee schedule will be easier. Currently, there is no charge for regular inspection or reinspection while the Ohio Fire Marshal collects less, uh, lesser permit fees, they also collect inspection fees, which we do not. Fees are collected and deposited to the general fund. In 2021, we collected over $1.4 million, and while during 2022, we have currently collected just over $1 million. Why are fees necessary in the fire code? Permits are... Uh, Permits are issued to ensure safety through a more thorough examination of the code in specific areas that may include additional research and inspection time. Permits are issued for hazardous situations, conditions that are more likely to cause a fire or affect a person's ability to safely evacuate. Special inspection fees are administered because of additional requirements from agencies such as Ohio Department of Job and Family Services, and they also require scheduling. Permit fees are a cost recovery method for inspector travel, office supplies, and other associated costs. Last, certain instances may require a fire watch. In those instances, the responsible person may need to hire the fire department. 
Publishing the fee schedule provides transparency for fees charged for personnel and equipment. The proposed code was developed in collaboration with the city attorney's office. Chapter 1, 2501, provides legal authority to inspect properties and defines the intent and the scope of the code. The proposed code also cleans up language for issuing a fire watch. It also cleans up language for an appeals process. And last, it provides code language for current best practices, including site plan reviews and our high-rise safety program. The Ohio Fire Code is set to be published in late 2023 based off of the 2021 International Fire Code. Additional updates are planned for City Fire Code Title 25 after those adjustments have been made to the Ohio Fire Code. CFD is planning for a quarterly review of the Fire Code with providing an update opportunities twice per year so that we can address emerging technologies such as lithium batteries, electrical vehicle charging stations, solar panels, and other new technologies. We may also need to update issues that arise from joint inspections between building and zoning services and the fire department. That concludes my presentation on the update of the proposed city fire code, Title 25, and would be pleased to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much, Assistant Chief. I, you know, obviously, um, you kept relating about let's get our code in line numerically with international and Ohio Fire Code. So, obviously, the Ohio Fire Code did that exercise with in relation to the international Fire Code. Now we're following suit, albeit many years later. Um, Correct. Yeah, and I think we have a, a commitment to do this ongoing, as you just mentioned. Uh, there will be some updates to the Ohio Fire Code, but not kick the can down the road and not address it here in the city of Columbus. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, thank you. And what impact will this have on current city operations and how will it impact or possibly change? Uh, how will this change be communicated to the working to the rest of the community and the workforce? Um, our public information officer will um, display messages within the community and then uh, having the opportunity here to be able to speak to you in a public hearing is also an opportunity to receive questions from the community should they arise in the future. There's been a few concerns that I, I want to kind of get out on the table as it relates to uh, emergency warming centers. Um, we've had that constituent group get a hold of us and talk to us about that. Um, will this have the you know, like an impact on how they operate uh, currently? Is there a change associated that would relate to these warming centers? Now, the Division of Fire is definitely willing to work and collaborate with other agencies to help support these types of activities. Um, with the fire code being updated uh, specifically as it pertains to Firewatch, most likely one of those situations would require a fire watch. I don't know without knowing the specific location of where we would have a warming station, but we could conduct an inspection before we open that up as a warming station. And if we needed to issue a fire watch, the language that is included in this proposed code update would help facilitate that process. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, it's been a goal of mine, you know, in whatever, whatever, whatever area that I touch that we continue to update and be current with our code rather than, uh, you know, letting it sit. And so it seems like after 35 years, this is an appropriate, appropriate time to do this. Um, is there any substantive changes other than obviously the numbering, but, um, you know, some things that you could point out that um, you didn't include in the presentation that are a little bit different today than they were. I mean, obviously you'd be charging lithium batteries, et cetera, but can you think of a couple of things that might be a good example of like, just doesn't, it doesn't relate anymore other than bowling pins. I saw the bowling pin. It doesn't relate anymore. <laughs> right, right. Um, can you think of anything offhand, Brian, that doesn't apply from the old code? Naming conventions were, were something that had changed where they, they group, regrouped a lot of the hazardous uh, materials into a 
larger section, so some of the individual hazardous material material permits have kind of fallen away just because of that renaming. That's about it. Okay. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I just thought if there were some things to, to just relate to the public. I could include that there is additional language that supports safety considerations for outdoor storage pallet manufacturing and recycling facilities. We've had several major fires, uh, major fires that have occurred at these types of facilities. So uh, these code provisions would help to keep uh, those situations, those occupancies a little bit safer so that if an accident does occur that it wouldn't lead to, uh, I think the last one that we had on the south end of Columbus led to a fourth alarm fire that uh, those provisions would be in place to hopefully prevent something like that from happening in the future. And for those that don't know, you know, that may be listening in, how, how does this work? I mean, what you know, if you, you have a festival, obviously there's there's an inspection that occurs. A lot of people may not know that. Um, talk about a little bit about that and the type of staffing that goes in that's involved with it with the Division of Fire. So, if you wanted to have a public event, then you start the application process through a program called eProval, which is run by the Department of Public uh, Parks and Recreation. And then once that application is filled out then it is shared amongst other city departments that scour that program to look for areas where they may have influence or input or concerns. So for example, for Red, White & Boom, um, when that event is being planned for, then we have fire personnel from the Fire Prevention Bureau that are on site inspecting fireworks uh, displays before they're set up making sure that the site is safe prior to attendees uh, coming to the fireworks show. Then we're there while uh, the fireworks are being set off uh, in case there's some emergency that happens and we have the authority to shut down the show in the spirit of public safety, uh, although we have not had to do that. Uh, and then also whenever there's a large event in the downtown area, there's a lot of cooking vendors that show up. So we uh, scour the area to make sure that every food truck or mobile food vendor has been inspected and is operating properly. And we do that in joint, uh, it's called a nuisance abatement group that's uh, where we collaborate with the health department, the city attorney's office and other agencies, uh, Department of Public Safety with the section of licensing to make sure that everybody that's at those events is operating appropriately and safely for the for the protection of the public yeah i, I realize that when you have especially like food tents and things mm -hmm. like that you're looking at if they have fryers we were at an event last weekend fryers there do they have boxes too close to them you know that type of thing to just make sure that everybody's safe um and I, I feel like a lot of people may not understand that, you know, that there's a process involved and it's to make sure that the, the overall public safety is, is kept and as well as the people that are working there as well. So, um, I don't have any other questions. Are you guys all good? Unless you have anything more to add, that really is the intent of this hearing, which is to highlight the fact that we are making, um, changes. We do not have any public uh, speakers this evening. So I do want to thank you, Assistant Chief, for taking care of this and, and presenting this to the public so that they understand. Battalion Chief Hart and uh, Captain uh, Fowler, I appreciate you both being here as well. Um, thank you for your work in preparing for this. And I uh, want to thank the Division of Fire for the contributions in ensuring revisions to Title 25 are successful. I want to thank John Oswald with our Legislative Research Office, my team, Jeff Carter, Lucy, Frank, Nye, Hairston, and Communications, the CTV team, for their assistance in preparing for this hearing tonight. I also want to thank, um, I want to thank, you know, 
the overall spirit of the collaboration that we have between the Division of Fire as we were working to modernize, you know, some of these things. I know um, I still owe um, Battalion Chief Hart a, a heartfelt apology for being here over the summer to talk about the changes in the fireworks code, um, and we didn't call on him, but uh, we certainly appreciate the work that you do in that regard, and um, we want to make sure that we are operating a safe community and and the division of fire is a big part of that so thank you very much stay safe everyone and have a great evening that concludes this evening's hearing